All right, so it's time for us to move on to um, dimensions and leaders, and that's under our annotation tab. So if you'll look under the annotation where we were working last week with the text, you'll have some options to um, set the dimension style and the multi-leader style. So those are the next two that we want to set. Um, this is the example of where we're going with it, and I'll give you a demonstration soon about how to do that. But let's start with um, the dimension style. So like we did with the text style, we're going to create a, um, a dimension style. And so your styles will be listed over here. And this little triangle means if it's annotative or not. So the difference between annotative and um, regular would be that um, annotative will choose the height of the text for you and the size of the um, dimension tick marks and arrows other items like that that need to be scaled up to um, be visible at the text at the um, plot scale that you're looking to use. So the buttons over here will allow you to um, set a dimension style as current. So that would be if you had a list over here, you could choose the one that you'll be working with. Create a new style, modify. Um, override style changes or compare two styles. I don't tend to use these two very often. Um, you can also choose to um, just view the styles that are in use or all the styles that are available in the drawing. And um, I tend to leave it there with the all styles visible, just so there's not something floating around that you can't see. Um, so if you're going to create a new style, you would give it a name. Now you can choose to start with any of your previously created styles, which can be helpful if you want to create um, styles that are similar but maybe have a little bit of a difference to them. So let's say we have um, our style that is for the plan, but we're going to create a, um, a detail. And the detail is going to be a different scale. So we can use the same settings, so we'll have the same appearance, but a different, perhaps, scale of um, our dimension style. We can do that in future assignments. So we would continue, and again, we're going to stick with annotative, but if you don't, I can show you where um, those settings would be. And I'm going to click cancel on this. We'll do the demonstration in a minute. Um, if you're to modify, this is where you get all of the options in your um, dimension styles. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tabs up at the top of all kinds of different things that you can set to make your dimension styles different and unique to your own personal style. As a rule of thumb, I tend to keep um, a lot of my um, dimensions at one eighth of an inch. And that just kind of is consistency across the board. Of course, you can refine them more and make them a little bit more um, custom to what you'd like to see on the screen. So stick with um, our um, color would be by block. Of course, if you wanted to change that, this is how it would preview. And that's kind of a nice way to see what we're talking about. So the dimension lines are the lines that go to the text. You can change their line type and their line weight, and then you can choose to extend them beyond the tick mark. So this is your tick mark to a certain amount, and I think that looks pretty normal to me. Your baseline spacing is going to be, let's see if I can modify that for you so you can see it a little better. Not showing up very well. Um, that would be how far it is from the um, object itself. You can also choose to um, suppress one of your dimension lines. Generally, you don't want to do that, but every once in a while you might want to. The extension lines are the lines that go to the object from the dimension 
So if we look at those in red, there you go, and we're previewing all the way. Again, these are ones that you can change um, the line type if you want to. Perhaps if you're using a center line, that would be the opportunity for you to make this a um, different style of extension type. I don't have the center line loaded, but let's say we want to load um, a center line style. Here we go, center. And set that and hit OK. So it's not showing up because it's not pulled far enough away, but your first extension line, so the one that you click on first, would be broken to um, reflect a center line type style. So that would be if you're referring to a center line of an object. Um, and then the second extension line can be modified as well. You can change their line weight, and then again, you can also choose to not see one or the other. Again, I'm keeping these at 1 8th of an inch. Um, they can be much longer or much shorter and are offset from the origin. So I apologize, I got this confused. Our baseline spacing was this and the extension from the origin is this area right here. Okay, so that is just screen number one. So we go to screen number two. When we click OK, that's going to exit the modify command. So we want to just leave OK until, um, not click OK until we're done with all of these tabs, setting everything we want. So these are the lines. Our symbols and arrows are where you choose if you want a different type of um, tick mark. And I stick with architectural tick because it is um, most familiar to our architectural style. Um, you can choose to do different ones. Um, again, we want to keep those pretty much the same. Um, so the architectural tick is just a, a slightly thicker line at the intersection of the dimension line and the extension lines. The leader style, um, again, we try to keep that close filled and that is not showing up on here, but we do have the opportunity to do leader styles within the dimension command, but what we're going to do um, for our drawings is use the multi-leader style for our leaders, and I'll show that to you in a moment. Our arrow size can adjust, and but we'll keep it at one eighth of an inch. Our center mark is used to identify um, the center of a circle or a radius. Again, that can increase or decrease based on your preferences. Our break size, let me see if I can show you a preview of that. I'm not seeing it. Um, so that's if you need to break a dimension. So let's say you have a dimension that's very long and it's really not going to fit on your drawing. You can have a break in it so that it is visible on your um, screen. Okay, our arc length symbol, you can choose to put that um, above or below the text. Again, we don't have the arc length shown here, so it's not previewing. Um, the rest of these, let's just keep it the same. These are really if you have breaks or jogs in your text. Um, and we're not doing anything that accommodates those right now, but we can look at those later. Our text style, this is going to be one of the text styles that we've already created. And you can see one is not annotative and one is. So that means that it's set to a size that we would like to see. So our proportions are way off here. But if you make them smaller, they do seem to be more appropriate to the size. So let's keep them at 1 8 of an inch. Um, you could choose to do a fill. And so that really punctuates your text, but when printing, it's a little hard to see. So we'll keep that at none. And again, you could choose to change the um, color, but I like to keep everything by the layer and that will um, allow you to change the dimension style just by layer. So let's say you wanted to switch the layer of it, you could, it will all come across as the color of the layer rather than a grouping of separate colors. You can draw a frame around your box. 
or around your text if you need it to stand out a little bit more, and sometimes that's helpful. So um, I keep the text placement centered um, along here, along the dimension line, but you can choose to go above the dimension line, outside of the dimension line, just inside that's in um, a, a little bit more squeezed um, opportunities or just below. Um, typically centered is um, the way that we view them in landscape drawings. Again, your horizontal will choose the um, location of where you would want your text to be. And this would be something that you would like to use in a situation where um, you have particular um, dimension style that really, or dimension that's just not fitting correctly and you need to modify it. Our offset for the origin, um, the dimension line, is allowing you to where you're going to put your text and how close it is to the dimension line. See how the dimension lines are coming right up to the text. So keep that an eighth of an inch. Um, again, you can change it to horizontal or align it with the, the direction of the dimension itself. Okay, again, we're moving along without hitting OK. Our fit, we're going to leave those all the same. Um, again, these are situations where you have particularly squeezed text. You can see that right there. Um, and that offers you some opportunities to change um, in a consistent manner. So if you wanted not, if there's not enough space, you can choose um, what's going to happen in that situation. So it's a little tight here. So this is going to automatically go outside. I'm going to allow AutoCAD to choose it for me, and then I can drag as needed to move the text around. If you are not doing annotative, that means you're going to need to set the scale of your dimension style. So when we're doing the dimension style, we would use an overall scale of 96, and that is in the situation where we're using 1 8 of an inch equals 1 foot for our plot um, style. And that'll be in the next lecture with layout um, styles. But our scale of our drawing would be 1 8 of an inch equals 1 foot. So you multiply 8 times 12, and our overall scale would be 96. So that's referring to inches. If you wanted it to be um, a larger um, one, if you could um, increase that and do you know, a much larger scale, you're increasing this number, 96. You could multiply it by um, a different number, larger, let's say 12 times 12. You've got um, 144. Um, that could be something to create a larger scale. And so let's take a look at that. 48 is pretty common. That's quarter scale. So 96 would be our default, but let's go with annotative, and it will automatically select all of these items for us. Our primary units are going to be architectural. There's some different options, but we stick with architectural units with a precision. Now this is important to just do feet and inches. Um, in landscape, it's very unusual to get down to a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch. Um, a quarter of an inch could be appropriate, but then again, you're getting um, a very, very um, small number here. And for most layouts, such as um, you know basic locations, we're not getting quite that precise. So feet and inches is good for us. Um, the rest of these should pretty much stay as they are on default. Over here, I tend to set degrees, minutes, and seconds with um, just degrees and minutes for our angles. And unfortunately, it's not previewing very well, um, but we can see that with some examples. Now, alternate units and tolerances are not something we're going to need for our exercises, so we'll just leave those um, on their default settings. So we've set lines, symbols and arrows, text, fit, primary units. Hit OK. 
That's going to default.